Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I have not been on here for a hot minute, but as you probably saw in the previous video I posted, we are expecting our first child, a baby girl. So today I'm gonna be diving into all things pregnancy, first trimester, how it's gone so far, and I decided to do it completely casual for you guys. So I'm gonna be telling you all about trying, how we found out we were pregnant, how I told Andrew, um, how first trimester has been for me because a lot of people have been asking and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So if you guys aren't new here, make sure you click the subscribe button so you don't miss anything else. I will be making some more pregnancy related videos in the future. But if you guys are ready to hear more about the first trimester, you guys can go ahead and keep on watching this video. Okay, so the first thing I asked you guys for questions on social media and then I'm also just going to kind of go through the most commonly asked things and things that I want to share or I think people might want to know. So first of all, I want to talk about trying. I found some tests on Amazon. I will have the link down for you guys below. Um, a lot of people are like, use ovulation tests, use ovulation tests, and it really did make a big difference for us everyone ovulates different and I had an app that was tracking you know by my period when I was supposed to ovulate and then once I got the test I realized that the two did not line up at all they were not accurate so um highly recommend ovulation tests there are the kind you can buy at the drugstore I did find them on Amazon much cheaper you got a ton of strips it was insane I will have it linked on the YouTube description bar if you guys want to check them out but um, they're the, what are they called? Oh my God, I'm blanking. I'm pregnancy brain blank, but um, I will have them like for you guys. It's, oh God, what is it? What's the name? I cannot remember now, but you will know as soon as you see them. They have a ton of five-star reviews. You get like 50 ovulation tests and then 20 pregnancy tests in the box. So it's plenty to last you a really long time. And I will say this is what really helped us get pregnant. We were trying for about just over six months when we actually did get pregnant. And like I said, the ovulation is not always predictable. I started to realize that sometimes I would ovulate earlier than it was predicting. Sometimes I would ovulate later. I did find that my ovulation lasted for at least like two days. My levels would be in the high area, whereas a lot of people um, have like a one day spike. So it is really important to know your ovulation schedule and how you ovulate and how your body works. I did not try any of the bracelets. I didn't do the body temperature thing. I just strictly did like, let me pee on a stick, tell me when I'm ovulating so I know it's a go and I'm not guessing. And clearly it worked. And I will tell you guys one tip of advice that I got from a friend of mine who actually went to a fertility specialist um, told me because a lot of people say have sex every other day around when you're ovulating. And so that's what we had done the entire beginning. That's what I know a lot of people are told to do. Um, it's just kind of like the go-to advice, I think. But we were told by our friend, she said, hey, when we went and saw the fertility specialist, they actually said to do it three days in a row around when you're ovulating. Just make sure that you're waiting 24 hours in between because it gives the the sperm and the swimmers a chance to build back up. But I will tell you guys, the first time we did that was July and July is when we conceived our baby girl. So clearly it worked. It also worked for her. So tip, don't do the every other day thing. Try the three days in a row thing. See if it works for you because it definitely worked for us. So the next thing a lot of people asked questions about was finding out. A lot of people are asking if I knew I was pregnant, did I have a feeling, like did I take a test because I knew something? And to be completely honest, I had read on blogs that sometimes the faint line would start showing up on the pregnancy strips um, a couple days before your missed period. And so every month I just kind of honestly got in the habit of taking one just in case a few days before and obviously nothing was showing up any of those months. And I literally was like about to get in the shower and was like, oh, I'm supposed to start in a few days. Like I'll do one of these. So I literally <laughs> like peed on the strip. I had it sitting on the counter. I was getting ready to get in the shower. I was undressing. And then I glanced over and I saw this like glimmer of a faint faded second line. And I was like, hold on, what? <laughs> so 
I looked over and I was like, oh my God, is this a second line starting? Is, is this like, oh my God, is this? Because you take the tests all the time and think you see something, but you don't. And this time it was like, something's definitely showing up. Even if it's not dark, it's something is there and it doesn't show up unless that hormone is being released by your body when you are pregnant. So that was how I found out. I probably in the first week or so took at least eight pregnancy tests because I was so unsure and I just wanted like a definite answer. So I took a lot of tests, but I honestly, I did not feel anything. I didn't feel any different. I remember there was like one day I said to Andrew that my boobs felt a little bit bigger, but they didn't hurt, they weren't sensitive, and I kind of just brushed it off as maybe I had gained a little weight. Um, but yeah, I really didn't know because I found out so early on, I wasn't having any symptoms yet at all. So uh, once we found out, a lot of you wanted to know how we told people, how I told Andrew. So I will say, I know a lot of people suggest not telling people until you're at least 13 weeks, which we did wait that long to publicly announce it. Um, but I will say like my close friends, super close friends, the people I work with every day, knew pretty early on because number one, it at a certain point got hard to hide the symptoms when I started getting sick. But at the same time, I was so excited, I just wanted to tell someone I was about to explode. Obviously, Andrew was the first person I told. Um, after I took that test strip in the bathroom, I literally got dressed and walked out in the living room and I was like, Andrew, I think a second line is starting. And I just started like bawling. Um, he actually didn't believe me. He told me it wasn't a real pregnancy test because it was just one of the strips. Um, so I actually, after I got done working the next day, went and got like four different digital tests. And when those said yes, that was when he was like, oh my God, like you really are. And I was like, why didn't you believe me yesterday? So Andrew knew right away. And then we um, had actually bought a box a long time ago that I've been holding on to for years. We bought it like right after Andrew and I started dating, which if that didn't scare him away, I don't know what would. Um, we were in Mackinac Island in Michigan on a trip and we found this little box that said the only thing better than having you as my mother is having is my children having you as their grandmother and I just knew she would love it and so I've literally had it for years like in the back of a drawer and so we gave her that box we went over to her house and she started reading it like oh this is cute and then she like made the connection so my parents cried, they were super excited. Andrew told his parents as well. So everybody knew in our families, our immediate families um, very early on. But um, I will say a lot of people do the whole like, should you wait 13 weeks thing? And I will say our close circle of friends all knew before 13 weeks. And my personal feelings on that and my reasoning for it is I have seen people go through horrible miscarriages and it's painful and it's hard and mental health wise, like you need someone to like lean on during those situations because it's devastating. And I decided very early on that I was going to tell my close friends and family early because if something like that happened, if we did lose the baby, I knew I was going to want those people to lean on and be able to talk to because I would be upset and I would need that support. So we did tell those people um, earlier on than we did publicly with everyone else, just because, like I said, I liked knowing that I wasn't going to be like an emotional wreck with no one to talk to if I was having a rough time, if something, God forbid, had happened with our child um, before the first trimester was over, if we had lost the baby. Um, I wanted to be able to talk to people about that for support and guidance through that situation. As far as boundaries on like who to tell and who not to tell, I just kind of used my judgment. I didn't make any like rules really. There was a few times I had to catch Andrew like, oh, so we're just telling everyone when he would tell some people at work and things like that. But um, we were kind of relaxed about it. We weren't crazy and we didn't need it to be like top secret to everyone. So, so we were pretty laid back on it. Okay, so, so many people, I feel like this is like the top question. Whenever you tell someone you're pregnant, they're immediately like, how are you feeling? How have you been feeling? How do you feel? So um, a lot of questions you guys submitted about how I felt during the first trimester. And I'm gonna go through like all areas of this because I think this is something, some of these areas a lot of people don't think about. So obviously physical symptoms. Um, my boobs have grown an entire cup size, which I've never had boobs. So I was like, what are these? Like what is happening here? 
Um, they are a little sore, like the dogs have climbed on them and it's like, oh my God, get off because it hurts. And it's so funny, I told Andrew, sometimes when I get up in the morning, like they're not even that big, but when I get up, it feels like, like, oh my God, like pain. So my boobs definitely got bigger. I didn't get super tired. I definitely slept longer at night and I slept in later, which I gave myself that grace and I stopped trying to be a 6 a.m. morning person. And I was like, no, we are creating life here. Let's get as much sleep as we want. Um, but the morning sickness, I know that's what a lot of people wanna hear about because yeah, it's not fun. So mine started at six weeks. I am 14 weeks right now. So I'm officially in the second trimester and it still hasn't completely gone away for me. It came on hard and strong at six weeks. I had no symptoms up until then. And then at six weeks, it was like, boom. I was sitting in the parking lot outside of the beauty bar um, about to vomit on, in the parking lot, like sitting on the floor with my pants on button because I was so sick and so nauseous. I will say like the heaving is something I didn't expect. I will heave just like, um, like you know how normally you can feel when that's coming? No, I'll heave just out of nowhere. I won't actually vomit, but I'll heave. Um, and sometimes I feel like after I heave, I almost start to feel better. Like maybe my mind thinks I got sick even though I didn't. But that has been interesting. Um, I literally, every time I brush my teeth, I gag. And it's not even like I'm doing anything crazy. Like I just, I gag so easily right now. <laughs> but brushing my teeth definitely makes me gag. The morning sickness itself, I will say, I grew up with acid reflux. So I started to realize that I think it was flaring up my acid reflux sometimes more than it was necessarily nausea because when I took Tums, it did nothing for me. Like it didn't even touch it. When I started treating it like acid reflux and taking an antacid every morning, it made a huge difference in my morning sickness. The other things that really seemed to help for me were eating oyster crackers before I even got out of bed in the morning, just even if it was just several of them, just to get something in my stomach. Trying to drink a lot of water has helped. Again, I take an antacid every morning, which really seems to be a game changer with things for me personally, because I have had acid reflux my whole life. And I'm gonna show you guys the Amazon stash I bought because I got a lot of Amazon products. Um, like right after it started, I went on and spent like $50 on everything I could find on Amazon. So I ordered Preggy Pops. These, I don't really know if they made that much of a difference. I also ordered these Upspring Stomach Settle Lemon Ginger Honey Drops. Again, don't know if these really made a huge difference. I also got these Pink Stork Organic Morning Sickness Sweets. Don't know if these really made a big difference. And then I also got these Ginger Chews because ginger is really great for upset stomachs. Do these really help? I find that if I'm starting to feel a little sick and I put like a hard candy in my mouth, it helps with the nausea a little bit, but it doesn't necessarily make it go away. The things that have made the biggest difference for me with morning sickness was the things I mentioned, the, the crackers, the antacids, definitely not letting my stomach get empty. I started to realize that if I hadn't eaten in too long, I would get sick. One day it was literally like dinner time. I walked in the door and ran to the bathroom and started vomiting because I hadn't eaten in so long. So definitely smaller meals, more food throughout the day, not letting my stomach get empty. Definitely all of those things helped. And then unfortunately a carb rich diet really helped as well. I probably ate like two to three dozen bagels in my first trimester, which is an accomplishment, but I don't know if I should be proud about that. And I did start to get worried at one point that the way I was eating so many like bread things during the first trimester to stop from getting sick, was going to make me have an unhealthy amount of weight gain really early on, but it really didn't thankfully. But I will say I got nauseous a lot pretty much on and off through six weeks up until now, it's still kind of happening, but I very rarely actually vomit. I will say that I heave, I, you know, all this, but I really, really rarely will actually vomit, which I'm grateful for. And I'll say like, I bitch, I moan, I complain about the morning sickness, it sucks, but I just keep reminding myself, number one, there are people that have had it way worse than me and get way more sick than I have, and I'm grateful that you know I'm not having that situation, and second of all, it's 
it's all worth it because there's gonna be a little baby at the end and it's totally gonna to be worth it. And they say morning sickness means there's gonna be a lot of hair, so maybe she's gonna come out with a whole head of just luscious locks. We will see. <laughs> So the next thing I want to talk about with how I felt um, was more mental and emotional because I was so excited for this, but then I think once it actually happens, especially the first time with this being my first child, I was like, oh my God, like I'm going to have a baby. Like this is, everything's going to change. Like I wanted this and I was so ready for this, but at the same time, it's still scary because it's new and it's unknown. And I will say, Andrew and I went on like a little up north trip and I kind of had a little meltdown kind of because I was like, I don't know how I'm still gonna do all the things I do. You guys know I run multiple businesses. I just opened a beauty bar. I'm self-employed, like I boss babe all the way. I roll my eyes because it's like, no, I've always done everything myself. And it was just an, an even bigger reminder that I need to delegate and offload more. Um, because I was like, how am I gonna be able to do all this? How am I going to be able to do all the things I'm doing? I can't do this with a baby and I don't want to because I want to be a present mother and I don't wanna be someone that's always working, working, working and missing out on those special moments when my children are young. So it's definitely come with some life evaluations of how I want to work in the future, um, also the people I want around me, any negativity, anything that involves drama, anything like that, I've become very protective where it's like, no, I don't want the stress. I don't want the anxiety. I don't want the drama, the problems. So I have literally like fucking samurai sword ninja chopped that out. And I'm, I'm not letting anything into my life anymore. That's not 100% positive and good for me, my well-being, my baby's well-being, because you know, stress it's all connected. They're right there. They're going to get all that. So I have become very, very protective of who I let into my life, what I let into my life and how I'm living my life now. And I think it's been a really positive change for me. And maybe the child has even pushed me into doing something I should have done a long time ago when it comes to that. Another thing that I talked about um, a little bit with Andrew that I started kind of struggling with early on that I've definitely gotten past was um, I did get a little worried about my mental health when I'm not able to do all the things anymore and I'm not able to work the way I'm working once I have this child. And I told him I kind of worried about, you know, am I going to miss or feel like something's missing because I don't have that, you know, work, work, work all the time ethic or not being able to like do all the things. Am I gonna feel like I've lost a part of me? And again, over time, it's just been like, no, it's just a different stage of life. Um, things just need to be figured out a little differently and we'll adapt, we'll adjust, and everything's gonna be a-okay because baby girl is obviously worth it. So I wanna talk about doctor's appointments as well. Obviously, if you guys are watching this when it's being posted, you know we are having a COVID baby. This is a coronavirus baby. So things have been a little different, a little unique. Our original doctor that I was seeing um, would not let me come into the office until I was 12 weeks, which would have been like two weeks ago. And I was a little uneasy with it at first, but I was like, well, this is what they're doing. This is, I guess this is what has to happen, okay? Um, but once I talked to more people and they were like, girl, no, like I got to go to the doctor, like you didn't even get a confirmation yet. And I made the mistake of ordering a baby Doppler, which if you don't know what that is, it's that little thing where you can listen to the heartbeat at home. And mainly I got it because when we were told that we wouldn't be able to go until 12 weeks, we were also told that Andrew wouldn't be able to come to any of my appointments throughout my entire pregnancy. And I hated the idea that he was going to miss out on all of the first things, hearing the heartbeat, seeing the ultrasound, you know, all of that. So. My thought was if I buy this baby Doppler, maybe we could even find it early at home so he could hear the heartbeat with me for the first time. A lot of people warned me not to buy it because people freak themselves out if they don't know how to do it properly, um, if they find their own heartbeat and not the baby's, and 100% that happened. I found a heartbeat and it was low and I felt like it was almost irregular at times and I was like, oh my God, started Googling things because obviously that's what you do and was finding all these articles about, you know, if you're this far along and the heartbeat's under this, you could have an impending miscarriage. So needless to say, I totally freaked myself out. I was like, 
I don't even have a confirmation of my pregnancy yet. Like the doctors won't even see me and blah, 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 blah. So I talked to some friends um, who were also having babies and found a new doctor, switched. And I'm so, so glad I did that. We got to go at nine weeks. Andrew got to come with me. We got to see the baby on the ultrasound, get our confirmation of pregnancy, actually talk to someone face to face because I had been completely on my own. Um, the only reason I knew anything was because of books I had bought or things I had read online or the apps I had on my phone. And I just felt so on my own and I was very uncomfortable about it. And so I was super relieved to actually go in and talk to someone. So I got my first appointment. We also did some early blood work there. This is the blood work that tests for chromosomal things, um, Down syndrome. Also, you can test for the gender early. That's how we already knew we were having a girl so soon. So we did that. And you guys, first of all, I'm so excited we're having a girl. I have wanted a girl so badly. I would have loved whatever we had. I wouldn't have cared, but I am just so excited to have a girl because my mom and I have always been so close, like best friends, and I cannot wait to have that with my own daughter. I'm seriously so excited. So we've literally already had two doctor's appointments now. I love all the doctors, and I do wanna say to anyone out there listening, do what makes you feel comfortable because I kept trying to be okay with not going to the doctor until 12 weeks because I was like, well, that's what they said. But you know, if this is, let, I mean, if this is your pregnancy, let alone your first pregnancy, you have to do what's going to make you feel comfortable and what's going to make you feel best because you are the one raising a child and it's a very huge thing and it's, it's something you shouldn't feel stressed or upset about. Um, and so I did feel like with my original doctor, I was being kind of like just pushed off aside and kind of like, oh, it's fine. We'll just see you at 12 weeks. And I was very on my own where, you know, this new doctor was so amazing. Just had us come in early. They've been talking to us about everything, answering all our questions. Um, they actually ended up catching really early on that, uh, something with my pregnancy has activated a thyroid issue, which I've never had a thyroid issue, but I am put on a low dose thyroid medication right now, um, just from the blood work we did, which low thyroid levels can, they said if it's left untreated, it can lead to birth defects in some children. So, you know, at the same time, I'm like, oh my God, like had we not gone, I would have no idea until almost the end of my first trimester, which is such an important time that I had this problem and I wouldn't have gotten started on medication. So, you know, trust your gut, do what's gonna make you feel comfortable and keep that in mind and keep that in the foreground because I'm so glad I did and I'm so glad I switched and did something that made me feel more comfortable. So I do wanna show you guys three books that I got off Amazon that First of all, was to learn and get all the info, but this I also wanna show you guys. This is a pregnancy journal. I did get this one on Amazon and I will have the links and stuff, but this is really great because it has you know your first appointments to mark down. You can put in pictures of the tests, um, you know, different trimesters, how big you are. You can journal each week how you're feeling. And I just thought that was so cool to have something like this to remember the entire pregnancy. Um, and also, you know, you can give this to your child when they're older and they can look through everything and see it. So I definitely ordered this. One of the first things I got immediately when I found out I was pregnant was definitely a pregnancy journal. And then I found two books on Amazon, which I'm going to tell you guys about because I didn't want to get the traditional, like what to expect when you're expecting. I wanted something more modern, more something I could relate to in like today's world. So I found two books on Amazon. The first one I got is called Bumpin' by Leslie Schrock. And this one I will say is more informational. It goes through every trimester. It tells you like what's going on, symptoms, like questions about all the different things about having a baby and labor. And so this one's more informational, um, but I did like that it was a more modern guide to pregnancy, more modern day, uh, more like how things are today and not just like textbook boring stuff. And then the second book I found on Amazon is called Nurture, A Modern Guide to Pregnancy, Birth, and Early Motherhood, and Trusting Yourself and Your Body by Erica Chidi Cohen. Um, she is a birth and postpartum doula, and I will say this one, obsessed. 
It's definitely not only focused on your baby, but also on you, which I loved because I think so many of these books are just about baby, 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 and here's what you have to do. But this one also talks about, you know, not losing yourself and taking care of yourself mentally and emotionally throughout the process of pregnancy. So Nurture, this book, I am really, really, really loving. Um, I feel like it's, again, got the spiritual side, the well-being side to it, as well as learning everything you need to know about your baby. So I just, I love it. I love that it even talks about like emotions. Like this is so right up my alley. So I highly, highly, highly recommend that book as well. And then the other things I want to talk to you guys about, I, I don't think, I didn't get these on Amazon. So I love the prenatal gummies. I know some people are like, oh, don't do the gummies, but I love them. I think they're a lot easier to take. Um, you definitely want to find one that has DHA in it and folate, which folate and folic acid, I think, are essentially the same thing. One is like a synthetic version. I'm not a doctor, but I know that much about it. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to get your prenatal vitamin to take while you're trying, while you're pregnant, and while you're breastfeeding, just because it gives everything that the baby needs while they're developing. I also look for these ones that have the omega-3 fatty acids in them, which is normally from fish oil. Um, just because the fatty acids, I don't, like who am I kidding? I don't know everything, but I just know they do good things. So I try to find ones with that in it as well. Now, as far as like clothes and stuff right now, I'm going to be getting pregnant, like big pregnant during the winter. So sweaters and leggings and are just going to be a godsend to me because I'm not wearing like tank tops and things that are more fitted. Um, but I will say like 14 weeks now, I'm at the point where things are getting tight. Um, I'm starting to have a little belly. It doesn't look like a bump yet, but something's happening. So um, the only place I've really, really noticed that I've had to change my clothing is with my pants, jeans, things like that. Um, leggings are pretty stretchy, so I don't really have that problem. When I'm at home in sweats, obviously not an issue, um, but like jeans have been where I'm like, whoa. So here's what I've been doing. If I have a shirt that covers, I just unbutton my pants. I'll be completely honest with you guys. If it's something where I need a little bit like more support, I've done the hair tie thing where you literally put a hair tie around the button, pull it through the hole and loop it back around so it just buys you like another inch or two. That's been fine for me as well. I haven't used these yet, but I ordered these belly bands on Amazon. I got a three pack, white, gray, and black. They literally go like a tube top around your stomach so you can leave your pants open and you just pull it down so it almost looks like a tank, how we used to wear back in the day, like layering clothes in the 2000s. Um, so there's those I got and then I had not bought any maternity jeans or maternity leggings yet A lot of people told me not to buy a ton because you'll be surprised how much you actually don't need So I'm trying to hold off on getting those until I actually need them um, I'll probably get a few good pairs of leggings and maybe a pair or two of jeans But I'm hoping these will help get me through as well to where I don't need as much But yeah, that's where I'm at so far with everything uh, as this first trimester is really like wrapping up I am so excited, you guys. I can't even explain. I have wanted to be a mother for quite some time now. I'm 31 years old. I always thought it would happen before I turned 30, but I can honestly say like it happened exactly when it was supposed to with perfect timing. And I am so, so, so excited to have a baby girl. And I'm so excited for this next chapter in my life and to share it with Andrew and oh my God, like I just, I know it's gonna be so much fun and we are just gonna love every single second of it. So thank you so much for tuning in and checking this out and listening to all about my first trimester. Um, I definitely wanna put out more content that's pregnancy related in the future while I'm going through all of this for you guys. So I will definitely be doing that as well. Make sure you guys hit the thumbs up and leave a comment down below if you have any questions or things that you did during your first trimester or if you had anything that was similar or different. There will be a box on the screen with my face. If you click it, you will be subscribed to my channel and there will also be some other videos for you guys to check out as well. But I think that is all I have to say right now. So until next time, I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye guys.